Lord is good. How many of y'all ready for the word of God? Yeah. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10. I see you all, my friends, in the fourth row. You guys have been preparing me for your, your, your visit. You came all the way from where? From Colorado. You came all the way to Colorado just to be in church this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Stand up and just go like this to everybody. We welcome you. Amen. Praise God. We welcome you. We thank you for, for coming to be with us. Uh, this is your house. Amen. Praise the Lord. First time we serve you. Second time, get it yourself. This is your house. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We love you. You know, they were watching us on, and seeing some of the messages and hearing some of the word. And uh, the Lord has been speaking to you guys about coming. Amen. This is the first time I ever talked to them, but I get messages from them. They said they're coming. So when I saw their faces, praise God. How many know that God's going to bring more? Yes. And they're coming. They're coming in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you there in Romans chapter 10? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about what God is doing. Amen. Let's begin in verse 6. It says, but the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above or who will descend into the abyss. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead, you will be saved for with the heart. One believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him? in whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? Amen for his word. You know, I, before I, I get into the, the, the main part of, of what God spoke to me about this, this word, you know, I love this scripture because it says that if you believe in Jesus, you won't be put to shame. And I just want to add this. I'm not going to charge you any extra for this part. But there's many, there have been many times where it felt like I wasn't going to make it, where it looked like it was a certain disaster. You know, for, for me as a pastor, you know, things that happen in my life or in this ministry, you know, our reputation you know, everybody, everybody stands on the outside with rocks getting ready to throw at the, at the glass house, amen? And uh, they're waiting to see something, to someone fail or someone, something that they could criticize, something that they could, they could say, you know, I always knew that they weren't the way they presented themselves to be. And that's one of the things I thank God is God has protected my, my, uh, my testimony, Amen. But there have been times where I thought, you know what, if this stuff were to happen this way, I could see that there would be a lot of shame. And I had to go to God and I'd say, Lord, I could care less if they degrade my name. I could care less if they, they speak bad or they, they, they say whatever they want to say. I know my heart, I'm judging myself. I know whatever I've been doing and wherever I'm going or whatever I do has been... You are the one that's directed my steps. You're the one that's taken me there. You are the one that has placed me in this position, and you are the one that's going to be my savior. Amen. Amen. So I've, I've gone to, before God and said, God, I'm not going to let that fear run my life. I'm not going to worry about what might happen or, or might happen. I'm just, I'm just going to trust you, Lord. And Lord, I know that you will never allow me to see shame. I know that if I put my faith in you, that even if man tries to degrade my character or degrade my name, I know that you will always honor me, Lord. Amen? And it doesn't matter what you're facing. Some of you might be facing tax problems right now where the IRS has come at you and accused you. 
Or maybe you've done some things that, that there's some things happening. But if you will humble yourself before God and go and ask God for his protection, ask God for his, his glory to hide you. Amen. See, the glory will hide you. I've learned to hide myself in the Lord. I've, I'll tell you, I've been before audiences where, you know, I'm thinking, God, what do I have to share with them? In my whole ministry, I'm hiding. You know, you might look at me and say, wow, Pastor Kevin, you know, he, you know, he has a lot of experience of preaching and sharing the word of God and what have you. No, I'm just hiding myself. To tell you the truth, I, I still, I'm still amazed I'm able to say anything in front of anybody. I hide myself in the glory of God, amen? But when I stand up and I share the, 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 the good news of Jesus Christ, he's the one that honors me. He's the one that, that allows me to share his word. And not only does he allow me to share his word, but he backs us up with his presence. That's how you know, you, that's how you know you're on the right side, that when you speak, God moves. You know, you might be speaking with your own words, but God's speaking to the heart, amen? And even if you don't think you said anything, when God speaks with you, you've said everything, amen? And people's lives are changed, amen? Tell your neighbor, I will not be put to shame. When you trust in the Lord, you will not be put to shame, amen? So don't ever fear, don't ever worry, don't ever think that other people might say this or say that. Understand this, God knows the truth. God knows the truth. And if your heart is pure before God, amen. Walk in strength, walk in boldness, stand up tall, lift up your head high, amen. Your salvation is on its way, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And maybe you did mess up. Maybe it was your fault. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for mercy. Throw yourself on the mercy seat. Lord, have mercy. Amen. And watch how God's mercy will be your guard. Amen. Praise God. I'm not going to charge you extra for that. Amen. I just threw that in. Amen. Praise God. I wanted to share this word on salvation. The Bible talks about whoever cries out to Jesus shall be saved. You got to believe in him, and as soon as you believe in him, your salvation rises up. That, that belief, that one action of God is real, Jesus is alive, that changes your life. Amen? Because once that happens, then everything in your life has to line up with his ways and his will. If you were to, to accept that Jesus is alive, that he is the son of God, that he died on the cross for your sins, your whole life changes right there. As soon as you believe in him. That's why the enemy tries to, to put as many doubts in the eyes of man, tries to, to put as many uh, lies to distort God's truth, to get people to judge the outer things that they see instead of believing the word of God. But as soon as man's eyes open to the reality that God is real, that Jesus is alive, they have to make a decision whether they're going to accept that truth and follow the Lord or live in a lie the rest of their life. Amen. Because if God is real, if Jesus is alive, then everything that he said in the word of God is real. And all the promises that he promised to you are yours. Amen. And your reality has changed. Your reality has changed because Jesus is alive. Because he lives, I'm changed. Amen. So I can't just say, okay, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now I'm going to choose my path for my life. No, because of the reality of Christ is alive, now you have to go to him to find your purpose in him. Every one of you have a purpose in God. God didn't save you just to get to your heaven. God saved you so that you could enter into the ministry of reconciliation, bringing people back to the Father, showing people that Jesus is alive, amen, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, sharing the love of God to the nations. When you know that God is alive, that means there is a heaven to gain, but then there's a hell to escape. 
And every day we make that decision whether we're going to allow God to use us to bring people out of hell and into heaven. If we say, oh, we love, we love God and we love all that God loves, then we won't let people go to hell. We will stand in the gap and tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. We will preach it. You have to preach it. There's power in preaching. Preaching changes everything. When someone has the heart for God and begins to preach, the whole world will change. Wherever you go, when you preach, you are shining the light of Jesus Christ there. The only dark places in this world is where the word of God is not at. You think about all the places where there is so much pain and so much hurt, you will find very little of the gospel. But the places where the gospel is being preached is a, pe a people rise up with the heart of God full of love and no longer they're living in the selfishness and in a fear, but they're living in faith and they're living in love and they're living in hope and they will, they, they're not trying to get from others, they're trying to give to others. How do you know you've changed when you want to give more than what you want to get? Amen. If you go before God because you always have needs, oh, God, I need your help here. God, I want this. God, I need this. Oh, God, I saw those new shoes at Dillard's, and I just need to have them. If that's your prayer, you're always going to be in need. You're always going to be in lack. You're always going to have not enough. But when you begin to take your eyes off yourself and you put your eyes upon Jesus, and then what God does is he begins to change your heart. Look at your neighbor and say, create in me a clean heart, oh God. He puts a, a right spirit inside of you. And you start to see the world the way he sees it. You'll be, you'll be walking down the street and God will say, there's, there's, there's someone I love right there. Show my love. You, you, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be eating your food and, and God will tell you that those, that, that that table over there, all those people need to know who I am. Just minding your own business. You know, God has a way of interrupting your business. He loves to interrupt it because you understand you are his servants. And when he needs service, you know, we don't show up at our convenience. We show up at his pleasure. We are here to serve the Lord. We, the Bible says that we are priests unto God. That we are not just any priest. We are a royal priesthood. That means we are, we, are, we are in royalty in the very throne room of God, and we're there to serve the Lord. We're there to serve Jesus. But how do we do that? Because he loves people, so he sends us to serve them. And so when we serve them, we're serving Jesus. Jesus said, you know, I was, I was naked and you clothed me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was in jail and you visited me. His disciples said, when did we see you do any, in, in any of those conditions, Jesus? He says, when you've done it to the least, you've done it unto me. Amen. Word of God says, when you give to the poor, you lend unto, you lend unto God. There is this complete reality of that it's no longer me, but it's him. Everything belongs to the Lord. All that I have is for the service of the king. I'm a priest. I've been bought with the price. I've been saved. I've been washed. All my sins have been washed away. I love doing this, washed away. <clears throat> because, you know, just think about it. It used to be on you. But the blood of Jesus washed it all away. Amen. In other words, it's no longer on me. Matter of fact, it no longer exists. See, some people say, well, God will forgive you. God doesn't just forgive you. He destroyed your sin. There is no remembrance of it. You might remember it, but God won't remember it. It no longer exists in the mind of God. It never happened. Not just your, your, your shame of yesterday, not just your sins of yesterday, all that guilt, it's gone. The Bible says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And when we live for the Lord, there's a great freedom that takes place. We are no longer worried about what we don't have because we got everything because we got Jesus. Amen. We're no longer fear about what might happen because we know where we're going. 
we know that at the end of the book, we're in heaven with Jesus, amen? It doesn't matter what it looks like right now at this moment, our future is secured in him. Amen? Praise the Lord. We're no longer in fear. You know, I, there's this, this great peace. The Bible says it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. There's this great peace when you've laid down your life before the Lord. God, everything I got, I give it to you. All that I am, I, I surrender it to you. Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do. Whatever you tell me to say, I'm going to say it. Whatever you tell me to go, I'm going to go. Because, God, I'm just living for you. And what God does is he takes that, that person that has laid down their life, and he begins to put his word inside their heart. He begins to put that, that word upon their lips, and they begin to speak the word of God, and the anointing of God is with them. Those that are hurting and those that are, that are sick, they get healed. Those that are in pain, they, 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 get, they get set free. Those that are, that are on drugs or, or those that are oppressed by devils, devils have to go. The works of Jesus begin to happen upon your life because you're no longer representing yourself. You're representing the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Understand this, the walk that we walk is the walk of Jesus. He had needs. Did you know that when Jesus walked, he still had to provide for food? Not just for him, but for all of his, his, uh, his group there. And there were people that would follow Jesus to give, to help, and to serve. To make sure food was cooked, to make sure that, that things were bought, to make sure that, that things were prepared. The Bible talks about that when Jesus would go into a city, the whole city would be prepared to receive him. That means people went before him with the word to say, hey, Jesus is coming, and they would show up because Jesus was showing up. Amen. It takes work. It takes effort. It takes sacrifice. It takes people no longer living for themselves, but living for the Lord. Peter had to lay down his nets to become a fisher of men. And many of you, God is going to call you because there's not enough missionaries. There's not enough evangelists. There's not enough preachers. This whole world needs Jesus. But how will they know unless we send them? How will they know unless we preach it? Tell your neighbor, preach it, preacher. I believe that God is raising up a new generation of missionaries a new generation of evangelists, a new generation of preachers. They're, not, they're no longer content with living the, the old life, but they want to experience the fullness of the new life in Christ Jesus. To bring people to Jesus Christ, to go where there is no light so they can bring the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. People that are willing to sacrifice, tell your neighbor, sacrifice. People are willing to endure. People are willing to lay down everything for the gospel. Amen. I believe God in our hearts. We're living in that time where we don't know what tomorrow holds. Jesus could come back, come back today. If you're not ready, you're going to be left behind. He'd come back right now. Okay, he did it. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> and if you're not ready, we're going to get you ready today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Someone's like, Pastor, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. The Bible says in a twinkling of eye, we'll be caught up in the air. See, we got to be thinking about eternity. We can't be thinking about ourselves. We can't be thinking that, that you know, we just got as much time to live for ourselves. And then maybe later on when we get to a certain level, a certain age, we'll finally live for God. You're missing it. Matter of fact, the devil's stealing from you. He's stealing your days. He's stealing, he's stealing your, your, your strength. He's stealing your youth. He's stealing your finances. He's stealing all the provision. Some of you need to get so hungry and press in that the fire of God will come upon your life and put your life straight. And people say, oh, I want God to change me. I want God to change me. If you're not willing to sacrifice 
you don't really want it. If you're not willing to fall on your face and get before God and say, God, I'm not getting up until you change me, you really don't want it. Because you know what, what God is going to do in your life? He's going to take you to places that, that you're going to have to make a decision. You know, God, this is tough. I don't know if I could go another day. But it's that commitment that, that happened on the floor, on your face, that will see you through. That will cause you not to quit because you've surrendered everything at the altar. Amen. We, we hear about people walking away from the ministry pastors quitting and giving up. That, all that tells me is they, they, they're still not broken. If they're not willing to die for the gospel, they're not broken. Amen. I don't know about you, but I died a long time ago. I don't care what's going to happen to me tomorrow because I know where my future is. I surrender my life to the Lord. Amen. And the life that I live is not for myself, it's for him. I will not be happy trying to go and gain the things of this world. I can get a new car, but I won't be happy. I can get a new house, I won't be happy. I can get new clothes, and I won't be happy. Those things do not bring me joy. The only thing that brings me joy is knowing that God spoke and I was obedient. That's the only thing that makes it worth while living another day in this world is knowing that you're walking in the perfect will of God. Amen. Why would you want to live in this world if you're not following the Lord? Where the enemy could destroy everything about your life. He could destroy your peace. He could destroy your joy. He could destroy your health. He could destroy your mind. He could destroy your soul. Come to God. Surrender to the Lord. Say, Lord, use me. And watch how great of a life you really will have. Amen. Because when you stand before God, you might have all the houses and all the cars and sacrifice all your life at some stupid job. But when you stand before God, God's going to look at you and say, you wasted your life on that? Hello? Thank God we locked the doors so nobody could run out of this place. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There ain't no fear in Christ Jesus. I remember when the Lord set us free. I think it was in 2010. The Lord gave me a word that says, I'm setting you free from the fear of death. But I didn't know as I was going to face death all year that year. <laughs> I started thinking about what would happen if I died. I started thinking, well, you know, I got to a place where I started studying about heaven and it got really good. Praise the Lord. I was like, oh, man, this is awesome. This, this is glorious. I mean, I got mansions. Hallelujah. I, Jesus is, I mean, it's so big that Jesus is still, still building the mansion for me. Amen. Still building for you. I start reading the word of God. I, every time, you know, I'm going to be in the glory of the Lord. I'm going to be able to be in the presence of Almighty God. I'm going to be in the holies of holies. I was just so happy just every time I would study death. Yeah, I, I, had, to, I had to close my, my Bible and I said, you know, God, I can't read this no more because I want to go. And, you know, I was tempted. I was like, God, you know, you make, you, you, your word is so awesome. It's amazing. The future is so awesome. Hallelujah. You know, to be absent from the body is to be present with, present with the Lord. Praise God. I was just so excited. I was like, hallelujah. And, and, and God said, I'm not done with you yet. And then I started thinking, well, if I died, you know, what would, what's some of the things I would regret? Well, I wanted to make sure that my family was taken care of. So I started researching and I got term life insurance. I spent 20 bucks and I get $500,000 of coverage. As soon as I signed that paper, the Lord spoke to me and said, you're a good man. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I was thinking I needed to have millions of dollars in the bank to leave an inheritance, but it only cost me 20 bucks. <laughs> Amen. After I signed that, my wife started saying, go wherever you want to go. <laughs> she started signing me up for, for hang gliding lessons. And <laughs> Pray 
Praise the Lord. Amen. And you know, the Lord has been set, he, he sent me into the jungles. I'm going to, to, to Kenya in November and Mombasa where almost every day they're shooting up buses, they're blowing up bombs. They're, they're dealing with, uh, with uh, Muslim militants, Boko Haram, who, which means anti-Western education. So they literally run into churches with bombs and, and blow them up. I'm preaching with pastors who have stood at the pulpit and gunmen have busted in and started shooting up the place. One pastor I met the last time I was there, he was in the presidential grounds conducting a revival meeting, and while he was preaching, they threw a grenade and killed a bunch of people in the front row. I mean, these are the places that the gospel needs to go. These people need to know that Jesus is there too. There's people that, that, that are believing lies, but they need the truth. But how will they know unless a preacher goes, unless they are sent? I don't know about you, but I want the Lord to send me. I thank God for the opportunity to pastor you and to share the good news of Jesus Christ with you, to stand before you every Sunday and Wednesday and whenever we're able to have other services and preach the gospel to you. But to tell you the truth, the only place I want to be is where the Lord sends me. Amen. And so I believe that God's going to raise up missionaries, that God's going to raise up evangelists. But I also believe that God's going to raise up wealthy people. You might be poor today, but I believe that God can raise you up to become wealthy. And why? For the preaching of the gospel. Amen. It takes money. It takes resources. It takes people willing to give so we can buy the plane tickets, so that we can go to those places, so that we can take care of the needs and be a blessing wherever we go. Amen. I believe that this church has a heart for missions. This church has a heart for, the, for, for evangelism. There are, there are pastors that I, I've given, we've given support that we help out that you buy them a bicycle, they'll start two churches. In lands where 98% of the people do not know Jesus, where people have never heard the name of Jesus. I thank God that we live in a nation that you can't even drive a half a mile without going into a church. But we need to use the blessings that God has given us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. The time is short. Amen. 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 Where do you start? Where do you start? You start with your tithes and your offerings. You go before God and you say, God, I fear you and I honor you. Whatever you've given me, I come to you with a thanksgiving offering to give you the honor and the glory for you blessing my life. And God promises to rebuke the devourer for your sakes. God promises that nothing will come and destroy your crops. That whatever you sow into, you shall reap a harvest. He promises to bless you. But why would he bless you? The Bible says, so that there's food in my house. Amen. So that there's food in my house. But what you don't realize is that when you begin to honor God, God will begin to honor you in ways that are beyond your imagination. Amen. Your life will be transformed. Your life will be changed. If you cannot honor God, that means, that means you do not fear the Lord. That means God is not first in your life. That, that means there needs to be something in your life that needs to surrender to God. Amen. And you might say, well, pastor, I don't need God to bless me financially. I've been blessed financially. Let me just say this. You just need God. Amen. You just need God because your money is going gonna, gonna to go. Your health will go. Your, your peace will go. But God, if he is your source and he's your supply, whatever you lack, he shall provide. Amen. 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 And when we humble ourselves before the Lord, when we surrender unto God, when we give unto his name, we're saying, God, here I am. Here I, here I am. Use me. Here I am. Lord, I'm going to honor you. I don't, I don't care. If I only made $1 of increase, 10 cents belongs to you, Lord. In the little and in the much, I'm going to honor you. Amen. We give our tithes. Everybody say tithes. tithes. We give our offerings. Right. Offerings, are those, those are those special gifts. Those special gifts. Have you ever gone to somebody's house and you thought, you know what, I got to bring a special gift? That's what an offering is. 
where we go before God, maybe, maybe something new happens in your life. I, you know what? God healed me. I need to bring a special gift. Or maybe you just, you know, just thank God. You want to thank God for a wonderful time you've enjoyed with him. I'm just going to come with a special gift just to show God I love him, and, and I'm going to come with my special gift. And what are we doing? We're, we're giving it to the kingdom. We're giving it for the preaching of the gospel. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, God will tell you to give to people. He'll tell you, give that person an offering, bless that person. Well, pastor, they look like they got it all. They don't need it. God didn't ask you to go up to them and say, hey, do you need an extra $50? You know, I, I, I'll, I'll give it to you if you say yes, but, you know, I. If God tells you to give, give. Amen? I remember one time, me and my wife, we were, we were eating at Whataburger. And as we were eating at Whataburger, I mean, we are just enjoying that. They got good hamburgers here. <laughs> Anybody hungry today? Good, I'm going to be preaching a little extra long today. Really stir up that hunger. Uh, but as we were eating, there was this one guy that was there, like a table, a table away from us, and we started talking to him. And next thing you know, he's sharing some things. I mean, the guy was wearing this, this nice jacket, but you could tell this man was homeless. But he was wearing a nice jacket. And he was talking about, I just came from a... a, a, a a job interview, and he was just sharing from his heart, sharing some things in his life, and we were just listening. Me and my wife, we were just enjoying it, and then he began to talk about God. He began to show, share some word from his heart, and we were excited to hear what he had to say. I mean, this guy had life in him, and we were receiving, I mean, we were so blessed that when we were done, we took what we had in our pockets. We had just gotten paid, took out a little bit of money, and we gave him that money, and we blessed him, and you know, we, 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 got, we got in the car, and we, we drove out of the parking lot, but I, we remembered that there was, I think we had some more money in the car, and we started thinking, you know, we're going to bless them with some more. So we turned around, and we looked for them, we couldn't find them. You know, there are times that you will be entertaining angels. Amen. There'll be times that God will tell you to give because he's trying to, sow, he, he wants you to sow a seed that's getting ready to change your life. Amen. It's that obedience to the gospel. Amen. If the Lord would send you special messengers like that, can't you think that God will be with you no matter where you go? Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor for the preaching of the gospel. My friends, I want you to commit your heart, commit your life. Husbands, wives, I want you guys to have a serious conversation. Do you believe this or not? Is this the word of God or not? Are you going to follow God's ways or not? Because the time of just playing games with God is over. Don't dilute the glory of God over your life by not living for him completely. Because the only thing you're going to be is a bad testimony. We have too many Christians say, I'm a Christian, but there is no glory. There's no anointing. There's no presence of the Lord upon their life. When you say you're a Christian... You should carry the goods. You should carry the power of God upon your life. That when you walk in a room and, and, and people find out, who are you? You say, I, I, I serve the Lord. I, I follow Jesus. If there's someone sick, you should be able to lay hands upon them and they get healed. Amen? Why? Because you surrender to God. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. That's why the Bible says, I've been crucified with Christ, yet I, yet I live. Not I, but Christ lives in me. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Say, Lord, send me. Oh, we heard a couple people say that. Say, Lord, send me. Lord, send me. Lord use me. Lord, use me. I'll, be I'll be a preacher. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you receive that today? Yeah. Can we give God praise? Yeah. Hallelujah.